What's up, Sim Racers? This is Larry TJR Sim here. And today, I want to have a review of the Logitech G Pro Wheel. Got three cameras set up here: a pedal cam, a uh, wheel deck cam, and then, of course, I got a new Insta 360 uh, cam that you're seeing here, front facing. That'll actually follow me around, <laughs> although I'm sit sitting, so in this case, it doesn't really matter as much. But I can actually zoom down and, and get a top view of this wheel deck. But yes, uh, let's do the review on the uh, Logitech G Pro. You might find my uh, findings interesting. It has been out for over a year now, and uh, it's actually a pretty solid choice when it comes to gaming on, uh, on consoles. So let's get into it. All right, so let's go over uh, some top tier choices right here for the direct drive market on consoles. There's really two choices out there. There's the Logitech Pro Wheel and there's the Fnatic, uh, the Fnatic DD Plus and that are the Fnatic DD for Xbox, DD Plus for PlayStation. Um, both are great choices depending on what ecosystem you want to jump into. The ecosystem for um, Logitech is very slim right now. It's just a wheel rim and some Pro pedals that you see here on the camera. And that's it. Uh, they do have, as far as a Pro Series goes, they do have a, a basic shifter, which I don't really recommend at all. It's very cheap and, and uh, toy-like. It's, it's for kids. Uh, let's get down to it. It's for kids. So it's great for kids, uh, but for adults that want something more tactile and uh, accurate, <laughs> uh, look elsewhere. Uh, but with that said, Logitech actually is a really good choice for console play, I've, I've discovered. And really the third option is if you didn't want to go with a, a direct drive wheel, you could get a belt driven wheel. I would suggest the Thrustmaster TGT2, which I do have a review on in on, on my channel, right? So go check it out. Uh, that's a great belt driven wheel, uh, uh, wheel to get that has its own haptic system in there as well uh, that really brings to life Grand Turismo 7 in, in this particular place. Uh, now this isn't, this, this is really, Really, the biggest reason to get a a uh, direct drive version uh, for PlayStation really is to play Gran Turismo in my eyes. Uh, if you are already a PC player, so if you're primarily a PC player and you want to dabble into some Gran Turismo, you want to have the best immersion effect that you can. The Logitech makes a lot of sense, just simply because of the true force. Plus, it actually has 11 newton meters of torque. But with that said, uh, let's dive into some cost comparison between the Fnatic and, and the Logitech. And that way you can have, have that on the table ahead of time and let your costs drive you one way or the other. Let's get on to cost. All right, so let's cover cost real quick. Uh, since we're comparing the Logitech G Pro and the Fnatic, uh, v uh, Fnatic DD Plus, just, just a quick quick cost comparison because those are really the two on the market that you'd probably be most interested in uh, right now if you're trying to get console compatibility. So the uh, cost of entry for, for the Logitech here is, is $9.99 and the pedals are $3.49. So you're into it for the Logitech G Pro for $13.50 basically, uh, $13.48 to be exact. And then uh, that course comes with the wheel, the, the, the rim and, uh, and the pedals. And of course you can hook them all three together to have console compatibility. I, of course, are using the PlayStation version because I don't really see a reason to get an Xbox version uh, because your Xbox uh, games, like Forza series games that are exclusive to Microsoft, you can play on the PC anyways. But of course, if you don't have a PC that you can play with, then obviously you'd want to get an Xbox version uh, slash PC. So I do understand that if you're not uh, stepped up to a PC yet, right? But either way, same cost. Uh, now the Fnatic in comparison would be uh, $9.99 just for the wheelbase, whether you get the Xbox or the PlayStation version. Uh, if you're gonna go for the PlayStation, which is really what I'm comparing here, is uh, $1,300 for the Extreme. So it's the DD Plus Extreme, which comes with a, a round rim similar to this this uh, Logitech rim, as far as I say uh, a round rim. You know, it's round 300 millimeter D-shaped rim, except they have the LCD uh, on the rim itself, which is actually easier to read and use, but it's a uh, design by polyphony and in my opinion doesn't really look all that great, but it is exclusive. You, if you really want that rim and you like it, then you're going to want to buy that rim up front as a package because that rim's not sold separately. 
Uh, but keep in mind that on that rim, the QR uh, on it, the quick release uh, system on it is the QR2 Lite, uh, which typically if you bought that QR2 Lite, it wouldn't work uh, for 15 newton meters of power. Uh, it would only work for eight. So they're doing a little switcheroo on people. It's, it's pretty dishonest the way they're doing that in my opinion, but that is the facts. They said it works great on this we've tested it and however long they tested it who knows but if you tested it for the rim uh why doesn't it not work to 15 newton meters the qr2 light uh without that particular rim right that's because they're trying to force you into that ecosystem and they're trying to cheap out by getting giving you the qr2 light uh, system right so it's total bs in my opinion now if you wanted a better rim uh besides the little rigmarole that the fanatic's trying to put people through the QR2 uh, is on the F1 style rim that they offer in the package. So same price, $1,300. Uh, and you're getting the QR2, official QR2 rim that uh, goes up to 15 newton meters, right? And then uh, moving on from there, you still need some pedals. And of course, you uh, with that. So pedal wise, you've got a, a bigger choice than you do for, uh, for the Logitech. And a lot better choice, in my opinion, uh, for the pedals. So you can get the uh, CSL pedal LCs, load cell pedals, $199. Not so good. Uh, they're okay. The next step up would be the Elite V2 pedals for $300. That one would be the choice I would pick to try to keep your money low but have a decent load cell pedal. There's some great reviews on it. I haven't particularly reviewed that one, but I've heard some good things from trusted reviewers uh, already on that. Now I've reviewed the V3s, which would be the highest step up they have there. That's a, a good pedal set. Uh, feels very similar to these Logitech Pro wheels, uh, Pro pedals rather. Um, a little bit more expansive damper kit, but it's still, <clears throat> it's still low end really when you're talking about sim racing in this day and age. It used to be the high end, but really it's back down to uh, mid tier maybe, not low end, but mid tier uh, racing pedal. So uh, your, your more high end would be your sprints or your ultimates from who's and fell. And then obviously you got some extremes with the, uh, semi cube and active pedals and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, that's the rundown between them and yeah, choose wisely. The true force is, is definitely a, a bigger game changer, uh, on, on say Gran Turismo games or WRC as well on the console. So it's very good on the console. But yeah, choose whichever one you one you like. They both make sense uh, to some people. So yeah, let's move on. Alrighty, so let's knock out pros and cons right off the bat because it's easy to talk to both as you go along. All right, so right here, I'm going to do the 3D image here of the wheel base itself. It's just easier to do it, and I'll minimize myself a little bit more here because it's not as important. And yeah, so... Very handsome looking wheel set, in my opinion. I uh, really like the way it looks. I love the blue sheen of it. This is 11, 11 newton meters of force, which is great. Uh, the buttons are very tacked off feeling. Uh, not the best buttons in the world, but very adequate for what you need. Uh, and then this little, little uh, rotary dials here look nice in the blue anodization that they have uh, as well. Uh, I do like the special touches of the anodized colors, which would look really good. The uh, wheelbase in the back, all your hookups here, just easy peasy right on the back, easy to get to when you install it. The the uh, mounting base is typical Logitech. You have the two typical holes that you normally lock, lock in for Logitech, and usually Logitech uses a clamp system on all the other designs, which they still do here as well, which is good for desktop mounting uh, as well, but I, I find that you have to actually use it for the rig because most rigs don't have this third hole. I thought my uh, semi or not semi my, um, my Sim Labs uh, Pro rather uh, had it. There was a hole there, but it was just a couple millimeters off, and that it wasn't quite uh, hooking up for me. So I couldn't use that. I had to use the clamp, which wasn't a big deal to use the clamp. Uh, it doesn't get in my way, it doesn't impede in my way at all. Uh, but I love. The other stuff is it's a noiseless motor. I love that it's very quiet. Uh, it does get a little bit loud once you turn up the haptic system a little bit on here, but uh, not too big of a deal. Uh, if you use headsets when you're playing a game or you're obviously using the uh, speakers or surround sound speakers and stuff, you won't hear it. If you do feel it though, you will feel the vibrations that it puts out uh, with the haptic system that's built in there. But so minimum noise for all intents and purposes. 
The uh, rim size is great. It's at 300 millimeters. I, I do like the rim size. And again, I do like the, um, the uh, pedals. I'm sorry, the, uh, the the buttons on the rim size. And I'm going to blow myself up a little bit bigger here to show you. But the rim size is nice. It's got to get the pedal or the uh, buttons up here. You can hear them here. So very tactile feeling. Not, again, the best ones in, in the market. But it is, get the camera back to me. It is a uh, really good uh, for for what it is for a stock wheel. It's it's, it's decent. Now, what's really awesome is the uh, magnetic shifter. So you can hear that from here. Quite loud, uh, but really, I don't care about the noise so much. I care about the feel, and the feel is very positive and uh, crisp. Very crisp and positive feel. This is some of the best paddle shifters, magnetic hall sensor paddle shifters that came on a wheel stock that I really liked. Even my AccuForce had crap paddle shifters, uh, but this one uh, is really good. The Thrustmaster, for instance, that I have reviewed as well, I had to add extra magnets in there to add to some of the strength of the resistance because it just didn't have a heavy enough pull for me. But these, I'm totally satisfied with, and they're, they're big actually, um, which is nice because when you're in a drift mode or you're sideways and you wanna grab another gear, it's easier just to, uh, Grab it with your pinky here, rather, and uh, yeah, rock and roll with it. So I do like that effect of, of the size of them. Now the other another thing, of course, is the extra clutch and gas, which you can use for clutch or gas or handbrake. Uh, or you can assign a regular button A, A, and B axis to it. Uh, keep in mind that those really don't work on most PC games at all, uh, even the handbrake mode, which is a pity because I would love to be able to use that on EA or C. Even on console, uh, this doesn't work as a handbrake. So you, know, you kind of sold a little bit of a BS on some of this stuff because not everything is mappable on PC and within the games. It's mappable on your PC as a controller button, but your game doesn't recognize it as a controller button. So there's some work to be done there, which we know will never happen, right? But Gran Turismo, it does work uh, as a handbrake, which is very handy considering they don't have a handbrake on the market anyways for this. Um, and again, here you can see a nice, better picture here of the, the aesthetics of it. The nice blue looks really sharp. I really like that. So, uh, and then the gray up here instead of the traditional blue, which looks good, a little bit subtle. I wonder if you'll be able to offer some different colors. You can unscrew this and put a different one on there. Obviously, you can wrap it in tape or something like that, but pretty cool. Oh, what else? Here we got super easy to hook up to the rig like I, I talked about, but you two bolt patterns, you will have to use the the clamp system backwards compatible with all racing titles so that is a really big plus for the logitech uh, ecosystem is that once you get into it although they don't have a lot of peripherals that come out for these things uh it works with all your games and it just simply works you plug it in whether you're plugging it in the console or you're plugging it in the pc the game already recognizes that you have a logitech pro in it and i, I kind of got a little um uh, i forgot about how nice that is to have a wheel that has the supported rim and the base and pedals all together as one unit and the game just automatically recognizes it. You don't really have to recalibrate anything. It's already set up for you. So it's kind of nice to have that. With AccuForce, you don't have that. I use a cube control uh, rim. And uh, so if you step outside of the AccuForce ecosystem, then you're, you know, everything's just a mappable button at that point. So, uh, but yeah, it's kind of nice to have it all, I'll be able to use your, your funky switch here and stuff uh, for in-game, say in like Forza, uh, easy peasy and your paddle shifters as well to switch menus and stuff. So once you get into PC gaming, sometimes you lose those nice little subtle details, but so that was nice welcome back to, uh, to this type of uh, a wheel here. Um, the rotary knobs. So this one is a nice indent feeling. It sounds good. This one, oh, let me get the camera. Super quiet. This other one's super quiet. You don't even hear it uh, on this outside one. But it, it, it it's too light, in my opinion. It's too it's too easy to switch back and forth. It is a push button as well, but it's just it doesn't have enough resistance to my liking to be able to be accurate with it when you're trying to switch, say, like traction control or something like that. But not too big of a deal. Traction control, I can tend to go a little bit, flick it, and have a little bit more traction control than I need it, and then dial it back and not be a big deal. Uh, brake bias and stuff though. This is very, I use this for brake bias and it's, it's very tactile. Now in Gran Turismo 7, these controls and stuff are nice. They, uh, they work fine. Um, 
nothing wrong with it. That's a push button as well. Um, it seems to um, fit the rim, even though it's a little bit funkier. I like it because it's it's different than the rest of the guys that are that are making wheels. So I actually appreciate the different aesthetics look that they went with this. So there's also some cool wraps I found online too for these different companies make. So check that out if you just want to change it up a little bit. All right, so moving on. Um, Another thing was there was no firmware updates needed for this this wheelbase. It came out of the box just working, which was a nice, pleasant surprise uh, to me. I actually tried to force a update or, or look to see can I update it, and it's already all up to date, nothing to do. Uh, but yeah, it uh, it works good. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, the only cons, of course, I would say on this. Uh, speaking about cons, is that. It is, you, you have that third hole there that no one mounts to. So you have to use the clamp, uh, whether you use mounting it up or not, just to keep this from moving up and down. Uh, otherwise, if you don't use the clamp, you can, you can rock the motor up. Uh, so I don't know why some people say that two bolts was plenty for it. It's not, it'll actually, you can, you can easily push it upwards uh, when you're doing that. So uh, I will, let me see if I go to a, a little switcheroo here for you all right so here's the wheel deck and if you what i mean is you could pick this shaft up and it does move you see that this does flex a little bit um, but there's nothing that you feel in game it's a you don't notice it in other words but there is some flex when you put some pressure against the wheel you have some flex because it's just a a mount it it's just mounted on the bottom here and you could tighten this up a little bit more it says just to snug it up and that doesn't really help anything because you got rubber rubber grommets in there and those are going to flex. So you're going to have some some flex in that unless you can solidly mount this with a third hole. So if that bothers you, uh, then you're going to have to drill a hole to mount this to make it a lot more rigid. Uh, but I haven't actually noticed any problem with it when I'm putting pressure. It hasn't affected my driving any. So it feels really nice. So I would tell you if it did, if I didn't like it. Well, I don't like that I don't have a hole for it, but I'm not gonna go through the trouble of drilling a hole because in use, I don't really notice anything uh, as being a problem. So with that said, we'll move on from there. All right, back to me. So uh, let's go over the pedals real quick. So the pedals, you, but very handsome uh, looking uh, set of ped pedals that uh, carry over in a nice anodized blue-ish gray color. It carries over nice, nice blue on the uh, bottom of the uh, pedal deck here, which I really like. Let me see if I can, as you can see here in the pedal cam, uh, it's, a, it's a good looking, oh, come on now, zoom it out here a little bit bigger here. It's a good looking set of pedals. The action on it, I've used, of course, the clutch spring into the throttle. That's really good. I use the red spring for the clutch. Uh, this still sucks. It's, it's nothing to write home about. You can totally, the only reason I have the clutch on here is because I'm old school and it looks funky not to have a clutch on here, but also I like to kick the clutch in some of the dirt racing games to bring the RPM up. The real star of the show would be the um, the brake pedal itself. So being that this is 100 kgs, uh, which is nice, the con is that uh, the it feels very wooden. And so I've messed with a lot of elastomers on here and every combination I come up with, it doesn't really feel just quite right to me. And so I don't really like them as a long-term item to use, but if you're just a console racer, really is not a big deal. They're not that far off or some say the Fnatic V3s and, and really nowadays the Fnatic V3s are quite far behind of any, any other elastomer set of pedals. Uh, they would be mid-range now. So the, these are mid-range pedals as well. Uh, nothing high end or even extreme for that matter, but they get the job done. At the end of the day, they get the job done. The throttle is absolutely fine with the heavier spring in there. I uh, have no problems with the throttle uh, being a nice adjustment. And you can see that little arrow on the back here, uh, right there where my toe's pointing. Uh, that all you do is just pull up and then slide it off. Super easy to change out. Actually, the elastomer kit was so easy to change out that I could just I could run it and then get back here on the rig and change it out real quickly and try something else and just keep going you know, on and on until I found something I like. So. I'll post up on the screen a uh, screenshot of what I like here, and that way you can uh, see the combination, try it out for yourself, and see if you like it as well. All right, so what else? The pedals are 100 kgs, of course, set up. 
they are too pricey for the price you can get. You know, well, we already covered the cost, right? But you could get something better for that. The only reason to get these pedals is because you got the Logitech Pro Wheel and you need pedals to work for console use. That's the only reason. If you're a PC player, don't buy these pedals. They're, they're not that great, okay, uh, for PC play. There's much better options out there. Uh, they're doable, but they're, again, if you're just strictly a PC player, I would look at Husenfeld Sprint Pedals. Uh, save up your money and get a, a better set of pedals uh, for yourself. Now, um, if I was a PC player, and uh, which I am, and I'm switching back and forth to play some PlayStation games, and I had the Fnatic V3s compared to these, and just give you a little instance here, I wouldn't be bothered to switch off to my Fnatic V3s from these pedal sets here, uh, just simply because it's not worth my time to do the switching uh, back and forth. And there's not that big of a difference between the Fnatic V3s and these, in my opinion, to make it worthwhile. Now, if you do have the kit, uh, the adapter kit, the uh, uh, elastomer kit for the Fnatic, you can fine tune it a little bit better to get a better feel than you can from these. But still, at the end of the day, they're, they're just kind of mid-entry pedals, both of them. And I, I couldn't be bothered to switch if I had to, if I like to use Gran Turismo a lot and then dabble back into PC play. So with that said, you know, draw your own conclusions, but that's of course my observation of them. All right, so, all right, so what everybody's usually waiting for is the performance. Now we list, uh, that's not to say that you're not interested in pros and cons, but performance, how does this thing actually react here? And of course I got the camera on the wheel here to help uh, mimic what I'm doing and I'll put some B-roll fit footage up of, of uh, some racing with it in action, uh, maybe even throw in some motion with it as well, but uh, mainly just the, the wheel itself. So the feel of this wheel is actually very accurate, and what I would say about it is that it's very fast. Uh, I think this would be an awesome wheel for drifting. I don't drift uh, much besides if it's like in Forza games or something like that, I'll do some drifting here and there, just intentionally playing around while I'm in the game. But uh, if I'm doing good, I'll, I'll drift some corners, you know, just to have some fun. But it's very easy and fast to drift with. I also like it in rally racing, too, because it's, it's fast. And actually, the slickness of it is actually helping in that point, <laughs> which was a con earlier. But the slickness of this rolling through your hands is helpful in, in drifting games and rally games. Uh, it doesn't grip your hand too, too much in that case. Uh, so yeah, I do enjoy that for, for uh, drifting and rally racing. This is a nice size 300 millimeter rim. It's just kind of the perfect size in my opinion. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's really good. Uh, so performance wise with the fast action for uh, drifting and rally racing, really like it. It does have uh, a very detailed force feedback in the wheel. Now I think it's a little too weak at 11 newton meters uh, for my taste. Uh, some young, younger kids may find it is plenty, but for uh, you know adults, <laughs> it's a little bit too less for console use, especially in Gran Turismo 7. Gran Turismo 7 really lacks in force feedback, and that's, if you think about it, maybe Polyphony is in cahoots with all these wheel manufacturers because you have to create a haptic system in a wheel to make Gran Turismo feel like the true simulator they say it is right <laughs> but uh it's and even at that if you think about the haptics how they feel it's a little bit grainy feeling uh, as far as the haptics go so it's not going to be as as robust feeling as what you would feel in an actual transducer these are very high pitch graininess feelings uh, of the transducers now when you hit the curbings and stuff it's solid it's a solid feel and stuff but the road textures have more of a high pitch graininess to it same with the engine RPM as well. It's a little bit grainy on that. Uh, it would be something like I would want to turn the filter up to help knock some of that grain in this out, which you wouldn't because it's it's a separate system. Uh, but yeah, it is what it is. Uh, it's, it's still far superior using uh, the tactile system they have in here compared to not using one in Gran Turismo. So uh, I do recommend this as an upgrade from say the Thrustmaster TG2 because it's, it's just very good as far as the tactile goes. And it's kind of the best is what you can get right now. So hopefully later on Forza, or Forza Gran Turismo will, will learn about force feedback and, and, and uh, learn how to program that in better for a wheel because uh, they haven't really dialed in for controllers I think. So.
but for wheels, mm. not so much. But anyway, uh, yeah, it's, you do get a nice detailed feedback in, in Gran Turismo with this wheel as far as the feedback coming through. What is coming through is detailed, which I do like. And then it really excels on PC. It's very strong force feedback on PC. 11 newton meters would be almost would say it's 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 adequate actually on on it. I don't really find myself having to want more than 11 newton meters, uh, except on some cases, say like Forza, you have some road cars that don't have a lot of downforce and they're very light in steering. I'd want heavier steering which you could turn up the wheel dampener to compensate for that as well. That's one way to help. But I generally run everything with no wheel damper and I run everything with filters off because uh, I want the most raw feeling as I can get. Unless if it's too high pitched, too noisy, then I'll turn some filtering on uh, to help settle that out as far as the feel through the wheel. But uh, yeah, it's really good. I was very impressed uh, running from my AccuForce and then going to this wheel here in, in uh, PC Play that it was really close to my AccuForce. Now it was lacking on power uh, as far as the force when it would react to the bumps and stuff was a little bit less force because the AccuForce is 13 Newton meters uh, constant and then at 16 peak where this is 11 peak. So uh, constant here is, is anywhere from five to eight depending on what situation you're in. And it has a nice little meter here that tells you what you're doing as far as force. And Gran Turismo, I hadn't seen anything over over nine, uh, and then on PC, same thing, nine. Uh, mostly in Gran Turismo 7, it ran from five to eight, as far as when I was in the curbing and stuff. Uh, and then on PC, it was easily nine a lot of the times uh, in the curbing and stuff. But you had more of a, a rubberized feel, like you really felt the pneumatic tires better on PC than you do on console. And so even for ACC on console, uh, the play was similar to what it is on PC, but it actually felt uh, more natural on PC uh, because you still had that feedback uh, from the from the hertz from the PC reading, like 400 hertz it says in ACC, right? Well, it was a cleaner 400 hertz on PC than it was showing on console. So I noticed a little slight difference in it, but I'm pretty finicky to notice these little slight details and things, and that's probably why I can get away with running high force feedback because I can still feel subtleties in the wheel. I'm sensitive to that, but yeah, it, uh, it's surprisingly good for PC racing. Uh, and I, I don't feel like I'm would be bothered to switch back to my AccuForce if I'm still in the mood to, in the season, let's say I'm still in the season of playing Gran Turismo. So if I'm still going to be playing Gran Turismo for another month or two, I would be bothered switching this back and forth on a weekly basis to the AccuForce to there. So that really says a lot for the uh, Logitech in my opinion, because I wouldn't be bothered. Even with the pedals, I wouldn't be bothered as well, uh, because I can get by with the pedals that are here. I can make them work for me. Not as good as a competition uh, set of pedals, but right now I'm not really playing competition online too much besides messing around with Gran Turismo online and Forza Motorsports online and you don't really have to be the most accurate person when you play these games online as you would for off my camera froze just FYI <laughs> but uh, like I was saying the Gran Turismo and Forza Motorsport you don't have to be as accurate with that uh, online racing as, as you would for for other more serious sim racing uh, more serious sims rather right on PC uh, okay so yeah the the feel of it in conclusion the feeling of it is very detailed uh, the force is lacking a little bit on, on PC play, although I don't have to really turn it uh, down very much. I mean, I do turn it down on some PC plays, uh, but uh, not, a, not a lot, right? So ACC would be a little bit too strong for me, so I will have to turn it down to around the eight Newton meters range, uh, just so the wheel's not quite as heavy uh, for my liking. And then say games like Project Cars 2, it'd always be maxed out to 100%. 
AMS2 generally is always maxed out to 100%. Sometimes I'll I'll turn it down to, um, well, you know what? No, AMS2 I will turn down to the 80% mark a lot of times just so I don't have quite so heavy a wheel, uh, which is which is fine. Uh, but the impacts that you get from the force when the forces ramp up is is less than what I'm used to with the AccuForce. And so, yes, you can get the lighter wheel that you want, but you don't get that that hard just oh my god snap uh that you get impact of, of force as you would from a little bit higher newton meter uh wheel but again i wouldn't really be bothered by switching them back and forth unless i was trying to do an official say i racing race which i don't do i racing anyway anymore because it's too expensive and i just can't be bothered with all the setting up and fixing the car i have that life right so <laughs> i can't be bothered with that but uh, if you were someone that you, you use, say, iRacing, and you're doing an official competition with iRacing, I probably would go to something else. Even the AccuForce would be much better, in my opinion, uh, than this. But for what it is, it's really good. It has a very detailed... Oh, and what I will say is, being that it's fast reacting, it's less torque in its reaction, which helps with the speed, I guess. But... Uh, but where the AccuForce is more torque at a little bit of movement. So that's kind of the difference between the two. But uh, I do love the speed of this and I love the smoothness. That's another quality about this. It's very, very smooth feeling. Uh, the AccuForce has a little bit of a notchy to it just because of the uh, the gear that's, or the, the magnets, the way the magnets are set up. This one actually, I can feel resistance, no resistance, 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 no resistance. I can feel where the individual magnets are in this in this wheelbase. Uh, you can feel that if you're just keen to fill in it. I can feel where the resistance is. There it dropped to no resistance, then no resistance again. And uh, yeah, so pretty good. Uh, but where the AccuForce, uh, it's it's a it's like a notch, 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 very close together. But the resolution rate for AccuForce is much much less uh, than then, uh, well, I, w I don't know what the resolution rate of this is, but I would imagine it's less being that it's you know, like seven year old technology. So, uh, but yeah, with that said, really good wheelbase. You couldn't go wrong. If you're a console player, I love it. It's really good. Uh, and if you dabble on the PC, still plenty strong. So, all right, let's move on to final conclusions after I gave you the performance and everything feels and stuff. Alrighty, conclusions. Let's go ahead and sum this puppy up, man. This is for it's for the console players. It's easy. It's, it's the easiest way to uh, explain this. If you're a console player, this is an awesome wheel choice for you. The Logitech Pro wheel. It is 11 newton meters of force. is really good uh, as far as having an adequate amount of force. You will be feeling a little bit missing in some some particular games. Like Gran Turismo is missing a little bit of. Of force, but I believe it's in the force feedback that the game produces, not necessarily what the wheel can produce. So I don't think it's the wheel's fault, it's the game's fault. Because, for instance, there is a really good force feedback in other games like Forza Motorsport 8 and then also other PC titles. Oh, and even F1 2023 on PlayStation has a lot better force through this wheel uh, than Gran Turismo does. And also ACC, way better force in AC as well. A lot better force than what Gran Turismo. So Gran Turismo is uh, definitely it's lacking, but I was really hoping that uh, I was going to get the feeling that I really wanted coming from, say, a Thrustmaster TGT2 uh, to the Logitech when particularly playing Gran Turismo. But I didn't quite get everything I wanted, although I did pick up some speed of it and and a lot of smoothness out of it uh, where it's no there's no graininess in the feel. It's very smooth and tactile. And, and um, you're able to feel and kind of catch slides better with this wheel than I was with the Thrustmaster. And the True Force was, I mean, 100% stronger than what it is in the, in the Thrustmaster. So if you're going, coming from something like a Thrustmaster to uh, this Logitech, it's definitely a, a good improvement, a good step up to go. And the pedals, you're not going to be missing anything if you're coming from the um, TLPM, I forgot what they are. The load cell pedals, the upgraded pedals for the Thrustmasters, which is what I reviewed as well. They're nothing really great to write home about, in my opinion, after using other ones. But they're on par with these pedals here. 
So I don't think you'll miss anything as far as load cells go and the feel that you get between those pedals and these pedals. They both feel very wooden to me, uh, but I can seem to get a little bit more feel out of these because I have a little bit uh, a better selection of elastomers, I guess. But I'd really be interested to, to make some custom elastomers for this to try to dial it in to a, a much better feel. So aftermarket department needs to get on that, <laughs> making some... Uh, elastomers that will give you a good spring back but without feeling so wooden because there's a lot of kilograms of force that you can move up to in here uh, you just need that feel that feels not quite there but all in all it's a great wheel choice for those that want uh, do console racing whether it's uh i didn't play consoles on forza motorsports i played that on pc so the resolution will be a little bit better but it was it was really good on PC, much better than Gran Turismo was on console. But when I played ACC and then the rally games on console and F1 2023, really good on, on with this wheel. So yeah, I do high, I do recommend this wheel for console use. It's probably one of the best choices right now. Uh, now keep in mind the peripherals are very limited. So if you want a different wheel, you know, you're kind of stuck with with just using this wheel right here for now. Uh, which is adequate. It's a good wheel. Uh, if you're not too picky and you don't necessarily have to have an F1 wheel, this is a, it's a ni nice enough wheel to use, right? Uh, again, it has some drawbacks with some of the comfort, but I put some gloves on and, and that seems to help as far as that goes of the scratchiness of the, uh, the stitching and stuff. And uh, since the wheel rim itself is very hard behind it, it doesn't have much squeeze, uh, softness to it. So it's, it's very rigid. Right, so that also attributes to, there goes my notebook back there, <laughs> attributes to everything. Uh, but all in all, I hope you enjoyed this review. Leave some comments below of your thoughts of the uh, of your experience of the Logitech Pro, what you like and don't like, and uh, we'll see you on the track. I'm out.